Something old, something new. Let's find out about this when you come back from the titles. Everybody, Anthony Dodge, the model train outside the Miracling Outsider here with another first impressions video. And this is going to be a first impressions of one of the oldest locos I now own, and it's this one. I don't have a box for it. This is a class 111 in an experimental livery. I was actually looking for a class 111, I mentioned it a couple of times in streams. And uh, my friend Lee Ruglinski uh, contacted me and said, Hey, I have a 111 that's just sitting around. Would you like it? And he sent me a picture of it. I said, Wow, I've never seen that livery before. I've never seen it in magazines. I haven't seen it anywhere. Very cool. And he gave me the model number and he s suggested a price and... I then went back and researched what is this model going for, what is a fair price. And we negotiated a price that I thought was a fair price. So I'm going to put this on the track. This is a used model. And I have run it in already and I actually showed it on my abbreviated live stream on Friday. So I'm going to put it on the track and tell you what I've learned about it in the last couple of days. So here is this 111 in the strange livery. I had never seen this livery before because it never actually ran. There's a bit of a story behind this that I have learned over the last uh, day and a half since I got this locomotive. This locomotive in this livery is an experimental livery. To make a long story short, and again, to all the purists and wait, that's not quite right people out there, I'm abbreviating this. Not going into every specific detail. In the mid 80s, Deutsche Bahn was looking to update and unify their train liveries. While there had always been, to some degree, a certain level, basically each type of train in each different region seemed to have their own liveries. So you had the TEE, and for a while, Deutsche Bahn made a lot of their cross-country trains in that same TEE livery because it just went along with it. And uh, But they made others and others and others. And there were all kinds, and if you watch... German trains from the 60s and 70s, there's many different liveries. It's confused me as well, trying to date it all. The first real attempt for Deutsche Bahn to say, okay, all of our trains will be in this color, uh, was when they went with, uh, in the 70s, they went with the ocean blue and cream livery that you see, beige livery that you see on uh, some cars that I run, some historical cars that I run. But they still had plenty of other liveries around at the time. And, you know, one for the ICs and one for this. And they had many. So in the mid-80s, Deutsche Bahn commissioned, um, both internally and externally, a study to say, let's find a really cool modern livery. And so they had a bunch of 111s and some other locomotives and some experimental cars, and they, they actually painted them in these different liveries to get an idea. What did they like? And Merklin apparently was in on this. And Merklin saw these prototypes, and I think was at the town of Heilbronn. I could be wrong, but I think it was Heilbronn. Um, Merklin actually saw many of these locomotives and uh, decided to release them. And there were three or four experimental liveries at the stage. I believe it was 1985. And they released 
three versions of the 111. This one, one that's in a special set, and then there is another one, and I'll try to put pictures up if I can find them. But these were all just experimentals. And the funny thing is, Deutsche Bahn never decided. They waited a couple of more years before they finally decided to come up with the scheme that is now known today. High-speed trains are white with a red stripe, the ICs, ICEs, and then the regional are red with a thin white stripe. Except where they mark first class, where they make it yellow. Now, what's interesting about this particular model and there, there is a special set that has a variation of this uh, livery where it's just red on top and white on the bottom with a set of experimental cars. And then they released another one of the experimental car test paint sets individually. And again, I will try to show pictures of those if I can find them. Now... Merklin at this time was just starting to go into their economic downturn that would f go through the late 80s and through the 90s leading to their 2006, um, 2004 to 2006 bankruptcy and eventually the Merklin family having to sell off the company. So when they were doing this model, because they didn't know which one was going to come out or if any of them were going to come out as the main one, they used the standard 111 chassis, but they did detail each version a little differently. But from what I understand, they used their cheapest decoders. <laughs> they used primarily plastic everywhere because they didn't want to take a big hit on this. So even though this is digital, it has one function, the lights. There's nothing else to it. No sound effects. It's just the lights. You can turn the lights on and off as opposed to an analog model where the lights were usually permanently on. And it only has forward directional lighting. And if you get up close and start to look at it, it's still... Very nice detailing, but there's not a lot of detailing in it, okay? There's not a lot of little numbers and everything else because, again, these were never full route runners. So they never would have all the other additional information that would be typed along down here, you know, where it was processed and checked and weighed and all the legal things on there. So I don't want to say it's a plain model, but it doesn't have a lot of little details you might see even from that era. But that said, you got separately attached handrails. You do not have windshield. Well, you have windshield wipers, but they look molded into the window framing. Now, one other unique thing about this is from what I understand, this particular version, the B in DB is not accurate. It's wrong. And this particular model was only produced for a few months in 1987. It was released uh, in their 1987 catalog. But again, very nice. It's a nice looking locomotive. It's old. And running it in, very typical of one of these older models that maybe hasn't been run a lot. Very stiff. Took it a, a little while to really gain it. But then all of a sudden it got very smooth and it's running. It's noisy. I have oiled it. I cleaned a little bit of the inside up, but I really, there were certain things I didn't even want to mess with and just say, well, for now, we won't worry about it. I think the biggest noise is maybe the ski. Now, the ski doesn't look too worn, and maybe I'll pick it up here and show you. The ski doesn't look too worn, but I think it's definitely uh, might be hanging a little lower. Uh, maybe... After all these years, the metal, it's got a little bit of spring to it, as you can see, which is good. But I think the ski itself is making a lot more noise than maybe a newer model ski would make. Okay, so rather than talk about running it in, since I already ran it in, I'm 
I'm just going to give a few running shots here and call it good. Um, I will say that the first couple of times it went up the ramp, it was not um, super thrilled. It had just random slowdown bits. Even on flat areas, it had random slowdown. And then all of a sudden, about 15 minutes into running it in, it just all of a sudden stopped all those. Uh, it just started running much more smoothly, uh, very nicely. But it's definitely a noisy runner. So I will go ahead and uh, get this running a little bit and let you guys hear. And then maybe I know people are going to hear noise and say, ah, oh, do this, do that. Now, if you're not used to three rail, you're always going to get a little bit of a metallic scraping sound because we have a third rail running along the knobs in the rail. <laughs> uh, so I've had to explain that to some people at times that some of the noise you're hearing is not an issue. But for those who are pros, especially with older models, and if you hear something you think I should address, remember, I am a novice with these. But if you hear something that you think is very serious that might need addressed, otherwise I think it really is just the ski and a little bit of the age because it definitely, it's also noisier in one direction than the other. So gearing, but it has four traction tires, uh, four drive, two drive axles, four traction tires on those uh, axles. And uh, then the other one just is a standard um, bogey and truck. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and move this to lane two because that's the empty lane and uh, just let you guys see it running in action. And yeah, I'll show you going it up the incline, but uh, otherwise I'm very pleased with it. It's interesting. And the funny thing is I found out about the special set, which has a slightly different paint scheme variation. And I found somebody that's selling it really cheap. So I am debating... Am I going to maybe pick up that set just as a odd collectible? But this model is particularly a little bit rare because of the messed up B in the Deutsche Bahn, from what I understand. So anyhow, I've babbled enough. Let's go ahead and show this in action. So here you'll see it. it's plenty of run in. And as you can see, it goes up the incline without an issue now. Very nice. Very nice. So there you have a look at this class 111. I am still looking for an era 6 version of the 111. Uh, they tend to be used in higher speed traffic. And there's plenty out there. So it's whether I'll wait and see if Maryland releases a new one or has released a newer one the last couple of years. I think they did. Uh, the, the big one this year for Maryland is the 120.1, which... All the 120s except for one locomotive have been pulled off, but we're talking about the 111 here. So again, this is an experimental livery. It was never used officially. It was, they took some of these 111s, put these liveries on them, and sort of did a test show. And again, I believe it was in the town of Heilbronn, or that was at least one of the places where they showed these. So it's really one of the it's really the first locomotive I have that is truly non-prototype. But what I did find interesting, as I think I mentioned when I was running in, is that because Merklin knew that these were not prototype, these were not going to be, or at least at the time, did not know these would be mainline trains, which they obviously weren't, they did put their lower quality stuff in it. The decoder is a very base decoder. The construction was more plastic than metal. And they didn't put a lot of effort into detail, although still a lot of detail there. So I hope you enjoyed a look at that. Uh, this was just, uh, again, thanks Lee for offering this to me. And uh, I'm very happy with it. It's just another one of these that 
sort of like my Prussian P8 where they're just old locomotives that haven't had a chance to shine and it seems to take them a little while to get the muscles loosened and uh, get their stride back as they were when they were new out of the box. So um, it's uh, it was really interesting, even more than the P8. It was it really seemed to be struggling a bit. I thought, okay, maybe it's just dirt on the track, but all of a sudden, about 10, 15 minutes into that running in session, you just heard it sound a little differently, and you just noticed it was running faster and more smoothly. Like the electronics all kicked in, the electrical signal finally cleared the entropy, the the kicked the rust off, you know, metaphorically speaking, and got itself going. So really nice locomotive. So I'm gonna say my usual Abhidazane choose happy trains. Take care everybody.